much they care about money, probably. Um, uh, all right, we are online. It's all yours, Javi. Hello, everybody at home, and um, I don't know where else you would be watching this at work, uh, in the car, but hopefully just listening and not um, watching while you're driving. I would like to welcome you to the Berkeley Poetry Slam. Bow, 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 bow. Whoa! Virtual. Just imagine there was like a Berkeley Slam above my head. My name is Javi. I will be your host tonight. And I would welcome you to the Berkeley Slam. I probably should have said that before I said the name, but it's fine. Uh, who's ready for an amazing night of amazing poetry from amazing people? Oh, you are great, amazing. If you have never been to a slam before, well, a slam is a place where people say poetry straight from the heart, but they written themselves and we put numbers to it and we tell them it was great, but it could be a little bit better or it was terrible and you should never do that again. But mostly the first one, not the second one. Okay, before I start, I would like to give a shout out to our uh, Patreon subscribers, our patrons. Um, if you don't know, Patreon is an amazing way for you to be able to support uh, local art, especially the Berkeley Slam and other Rich Oak productions. A special shout out to our patrons, Sarah O'Connell, Alice Grimm, Jessica Kozasik, Emily Chow, Kella Lilly, and Renee Edmonds. Thank you for all of you for supporting our workshops, for supporting uh, our poets coming up here, for putting the money back into the community. Amazing, lit, great. If you're at home thinking, how can I do that? You can go to patreon.com slash rich oak events, or you could even cash app rich oak events or Venmo rich oak slam. Mm, easy, amazing. If you are forgetting or didn't get catch that, don't worry, I'll say it again later. Okay, so I have some rules for everybody. Audience members, if you're at home, Turn off your phones, put it on silent. I'm just kidding, you could have it on. It, we're not gonna hear it, but just be engaged as possible. Hold that space, be in here. You know, the more energy you give to the poets, the more they give back. We'll understand it psychically, even though we probably won't hear you cheering, but you know, like we'll hear feel it in here. Poets, I have some rules for you. Poets have three minutes and 10 seconds to say whatever they want, as long as they wrote it themselves and you know, it's from their heart, whatever. Just say whatever you want, as long as it's in three minutes and 10 seconds. At four minutes, you will be muted. If you go after three minutes and 10 seconds, you'll lose points, but no one likes thinking about math. We have a scorekeeper for all of that. There's no props, to those music, uh, no uh, animal accompaniments, no costumes, no other things other than your voice and your hands and everything that you wanna do with all of that, okay? The top five from the first round will move on to round two and then the round two we'll do the same thing again and we'll figure out who wins the money okay amazing now i have some rules for the judges judges are people we picked ahead of time don't worry at home you don't have to do it although you can if you want to and if you're just that kind of person you're judging each and every poet for the poem that they wrote and announced uh, based on a 0, 0.0 to 10.0 0 scale 0, 0.0 meaning that the poem sucked and it was 10.0 meaning that the poem was amazing and everything in between meaning it was I don't know something that wasn't the best thing I heard and but it also was something that wasn't the worst thing I heard the most important thing judges is to not score creep that means throughout the night you might hear uh poets who are getting better and better you might be drinking a little bit more you might be you know feeling the cool summer breeze a little bit more and you want to score the later poets higher make sure you're only doing that because you actually think that they're better okay stay as consistent as possible okay remember we're scoring from 0, 0.0 to 10.0 only one decimal scale over if you do 0. 0.35682 no we don't have calculators when we do but we're only doing the first decimal point Okay, so now I got all the rules for the judges, for the poets, for the uh, audience. Um, who's ready to start the show? Ah! <laughs> Before we start the show, I have to say our order of poets. Poets will be going in this order. When I say up next, uh, I will usually say on deck. That means you are the poet coming up after this coming poet. And then when I say up next, it's the actual poet coming up. That was a little confusing. If I say up next, you're coming up. If I say on deck, you're coming up after that person there we go Ooh. okay so the list of poets will be going in this order 
cheer for every single one. We have Tina, we have Reggie, we have Nika, we have Bambi, we have Dog Days Are Over, we have Chardonnay, and we have May. Give it up for our poet. Now who's ready to start the show? Uh, ooh, we can't start the show yet because we don't have a sacrifice. What is a sacrifice, you may ask? Well, a sacrifice is a poet that we have asked to come up tonight and not be a part of the scoring for the money. They're just here because they love poetry and because I asked them to do so. So it's someone to cleanse the judge's palate. So judges, score this poet whatever you want, but any poem afterwards that you like more, score it higher. If you don't like it as much, score it lower. Great, amazing, love y'all. Okay, so on deck, that means after this poet, we have Tino, the first poet of the slam, but coming up right now, give it up for our first sacrificial poet, Nicole Tracy. Mic check. We can hear you. Dope. New shit. The origin story of my relationship to my body. Observation one. I do not look like my mother. We both have dark hair, but it is so different. Hers, always down, straight, flat. Mine, a mess. Evidence of a six-year-old playground adventure. My hair braided or put in pigtails anytime my grandmother can get her hands on it. I do not mind because it makes her happy. Hypothesis. If you let your grandmother do your hair, then you will make her happy. Question. Is this because she misses helping her own children? Observation two. I do not remember my father before I was five. I know we looked similar as children, but grew apart. I even mistook photos of us when we were both small children. I grew up and do not recognize either child in these photos. I wonder now if this is history warning me. Hypothesis. If you keep your child at a distance, then you will grow apart. Question. Is there a way to prevent family history from repeating itself? Observation three. None of my dolls looks like me. Barbie, all long legs, dainty and feminine. I loved my skin knees and loose teeth until then. She was meant to be timeless, smile, silent, ageless, an aspiration for girls to grow into. Her favorite activity, going shopping. I wonder how Barbie earned her money. Ken was never around, so maybe she was a trophy wife. I never wanted to be just beautiful smiles and silence. Hypothesis. If girls are supposed to love their dolls, then we are not meant to love what makes us different from her. Question, is Barbie why I hate traditionally feminine things? Observation four, I spend an absurd amount of time in front of mirrors until it is no longer a body looking back at me. It is feet too tired of breaking in shoes, legs forcing a turnout on a bruised knee, begging for a break. I forget I'm not just pieces needing to be perfected. Hypothesis. If I forget what makes me myself, then it is easier to change into who I should be. Question, how long will I blame myself for being afraid to change? Observation five, I keep being told I am sexy for my body. I am made to be the target. I must always be defensive to protect myself. But I think somewhere along the way I forgot that and now I am against myself too. Mirrors from observation four show me, show me what makes me a target and what needs perfecting. I do not feel like myself and must make myself disappear. Hypothesis, if I do not feel like myself, then I can pretend this hurts someone else. Question, if I was shown what makes me the target, is it still my fault when the violence is inflicted? Observation six, I still remember where every hand was every time I said no. I wonder if I will ever forget where bruises were. Instead, I distract my mind and put permanent ink over faded pain. Sleeping through the night is something I will never not be thankful for anymore. I have to tell every intimate partner why I burst into tears for things they do not know. Hypothesis. If healing is a process, then sometimes I will write in past, present, and future tenses and all of these are true. Answer. Yes, some days are easy and some days are hard, but it doesn't mean I have survived any less. Thank you. Give it up for our staff. <laughs> judges, give us your scores, please. Judges, give us your scores. Okay. 
So all of you in the audience have heard what a poem is and y'all know what poetry is. So I'm gonna need some more energy, some more fire and ferocity. That was an amazing sack, which is usually a good sign for an amazing show. Okay, do we have our scores in Schoolkeeper? Okay, perfect. So our sack for the first round got a 24.6. Give it up for the poetry, not the points. <laughs> On deck, we have Reggie Edmonds coming up to the stage. Give it up for Tino. <laughs> wow. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. También de este lado hay sueños. On this side too, there are dreams. Janine Cummings. And so I should be grateful she put a brown face on the mask of an unnamed immigrant. And so I should be able to see my parents in her book, Call American Dirt, a true immigrant story told by a white woman, a voice for the voiceless. Here is our white woman's savior. Here is her riding, galloping in to save the brown people, to upend the violence, conquer the bad hombres, here, I ask for a cut from her will to support my family, and she calls me ungrateful. Seven-figure book deals and 69,000 kids in cages later, she's still comfortable. Uses her American visa to unfurl the wall for herself. When I say she's profiting from a story that does not belong to her, she calls Latinos a product of the cartel, a border. Another El Dorado is satiated with a proper pillage. I call her white noise, and she proceeds to create an abundance of static. She begins to sob and say how, how sorry she is how bothered to profit. I mean, humanize my parents. Janine hides behind her tears the way all white women do. I tell her white woman is synonymous with invasion to me, and she cries more. All white women do, all white women do is embellish a narrative and cry when they're called liars. Says no one appreciates her work, but her white audience is still buying it, are quick to protect her and heckle me. I tell her I'm uncomfortable how quick she makes herself the victim. Like I haven't tried to cast my family as resilient, just to have them to write her write them off as hopeless. And yes, I'm better. How all our stories survive because of us. Hand, handed down from generations just for her to call it an anthropology. How she says La Frontera. Her voice is the wall and dock, and people have to crawl over how she can quote everything. And people believe it fell from her mouth first. That mi este lado hay sueños. On this side too, there are dreams. Annalise and Armando Annalise Punello. Get it right, Janine. None of this work is yours. These aren't stories you can bleed dry, but you try anyway. Feminism so American, it's new wave imperialism. White savior so well meaning I empty my pockets in exchange for my own trauma. She must think this is some kind of mercy. She must think she's doing us a favor. No one is voiceless, not in the way you claim us to be, Janine. But you are interested in making yourself a platform for us. So fuck your book. Here, I'm ready to write you out of existence. Here is the money you made a profit off of, giving back to the people. Here, I'll up and the violence. It begins with you, Janine, and exiling you from our spaces to expose you for what you are. White noise performing brown face. White woman still colonizer. White woman still violent. Give it up for the poet. Woo! Woo! Judges, give me your scores, please. Judges, give your scores to the scorekeeper. Ooh, wow. What did I say about having a good slam? But I'm also being unbiased and I haven't, I don't have an opinion on any of these poems other than they're amazing, which I guess is a little biased, but like equal ground bias. I don't know how bias works. I took statistics years ago. Okay, on deck, we have Vika Roots, but coming up to the stage, give it up for Reggie Edmonds. Woo! Um, shout out to David Bayer. This poem is about you. Every white man's family tree got enough niggas swaying from the branches to mistake our blood for their lineage. Subjugation 
becomes misinformation, becomes rewritten history, becomes slave rape branded as an American love story. Look back into my family tree and there are white hands grasping at black necks until there is only a history of control. Racism does not care who your mother claimed to love. It will still crawl from your throat to call me a nigger and then expect an apology after. A white man calls me nigga and says he means brother, says kinship is a spiritual thing, but forgets the ancestral violence that silences my ancestral rage. History nooses its hands around my throat and here I am, another conquered nigga renamed domesticated. White folks think that the family pets still count as family, will call the dog a better name than the blackest spots of their legacy. Your family tree is nothing but a lynch mob, a black body swaying in the breeze. The justice that slips through our blood-soaked fingers. White men say nigger and mean nigger. White men say nigger and mean dead. White men are violent, have been violent, will always be violent. The blood on their hands evaporating into history or watering the ground to nourish the roots of their bigotry. White men who say nigger paved the way for white men who say nigger, who paved the way for white men to kill niggers. They named us dead before they named us anything. They named us nothing before we could name ourselves. Now every word we pass down to our children carries a legacy of violence. I want to be called a word that means home. I want my name to be more than flesh caked underneath the fingernails of the first white man who tries to claim me. But every syllable in this colonizer's tongue tastes like blood soaked cotton. There is no name in this language that does not describe the ownership of my body. There is no history in this country that does not hold all of my family's ghosts. Give it up for the poet. Wow. Uh, judges, give, give your scorekeeper the score. <laughs> uh, okay, our last poet, Tino, got a 26.6. Give it up for the poet, not the points. I want to remind you guys at home, you guys, gals, and non-binary folks. Uh, I'm sorry, I burped because I was drinking a drink. Please support your local bar. This would make more sense if we were in a venue with alcohol, but you know, just go to your fridge and like get a glass of water or something. Um, but you can also support local artists by being a part of our Patreon, patreon.com slash rich oak events. Okay, you can also follow our YouTube, Bay Poets Unite. There's so many great things to do, okay? So on deck, we have Bambi, but coming up to the stage, give it up for Nika Roots. There are no show. I don't know if I, I think I removed them from the list, but there are no show. Okay, well, so. I'm going to stand here and uh, Bambi is up next. On deck is Dog Days Are Over. Bambi is up next, but I'm going to give Bambi a second just in case. Okay, on deck we have Dog Days Are Over, but coming up to the stage now is Bambi. Mm, it would appear that Bambi is not in the. I think it might have crashed for them. I know they were saying they were technical. Wow, this is a. This is unfortunate. Um, oh no. Okay, well, I think, I think Bambi crashed, or so maybe. Wow. Maybe. That's what we call white supremacy. Ooh, that last poem was just too much for Zoom in general. But still, I'm biased, you know, all poems are great and all poems are also terrible. Anyway, uh, moving on then, and maybe hopefully we'll be able to get our poets who weren't here back. Uh, on deck now is Chardonnay, but coming up to the stage is Dog Days Are Over. Gang, 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 gang. Copious amount of agonized crime related activities. The hood gives two queer men a carnation, one. And while still entranced by the possibility of a smile crowning across the face of a man he wants to cradle intimately, he glances at the lone carnation. He plucks it from its rootless concrete, 
and he gifts this gift to the blooming heart that unfurls under the skin of the man with a silken smile and cradling gaze. His mouth blooms, calling him sweet. In this moment, they both taste honey and exchange nectar behind locked doors. The carnation witnesses their saccharine. It witnessed Mary weeping at the crucifixion of Christ, incarnating its petals into an altar where there was none. It learned enough of God's secrets to absorb Christ's blood in to its petals, carnations were language for secret. Lovers, questions, messages, solid colored for yes, striped for sorry, yellow for no. So of course the hood said yes to the queer of our gaze and the interlace of our fingers said yes to his body as my Eucharist because anything touching my lips becomes holy. And this way I consecrate his skin into something sacred. I cradle him with my mountain range limbs and his shoulders bloom carnation the fields and no wonder carnations are known as the flowers of the gods. Sometimes my mouth still bleeds crimson silence, but we just call it God. Aztecs would alchemize carnal carnations to treat chest congestion. No wonder my heart is crowned with coronary coronations bursting at the thought of us intercradling our mouths bleeding honey coronations of carnal carnations crowning the ceremony of our interchanging bodies pulsing into each other with warm sparks to the hood gifts to queer men a carnation and both their home hood smile, bridging spectrums of faint carnations between Eastside San Jose and Daly City. It forms the only red line that unites two souls together rather than splitting them up. Part the hood hoods its hoodie and cradles my and his body. I feel our metaphysical chest de decongesting as our throats cradle each other's honey. Sometimes your mouth still bleeds crimson silence, but I just call it Mary's tears. We learn enough of each other's secrets to absorb each other's nectar into our petals. You cry rivulets, and my mouth baptizes your tears into holy water. Rivers flowing with blood droplets still our intercarnality in Incarnates its own intuition, honeysuckles its nectarine milk. We bleed soft carnations encrusted with honeyed rubies. We listen to each other's heartbeat, chest gaping wide with veins intertwining. If red lines can split entire cities, then our chests can split entire systems when synchronized with the queer of humanity. Thank you. Give it up for the poet. Judges, please send your scores in. Uh, ooh. Okay, so our last poet, Reggie, got a 28.6. Give it up for the poet, not the points. Uh, okay, on deck, we have the last poet of the first round, Mai. But coming up to the stage, give it up for Chardonnay. Bah, bah, bah. <laughs> What happens when you leave a relationship that was a body bag? You must learn not to fake dead. To be alive is to speak. The silence was learned every time the bag was zipped shut and trapped your words. A sudden fear of zippers as if everyone meant to put you under, to keep you hidden. The fear stops you from unzipping, from unzipping, from opening up to anyone you think will bury you if you give them the power. You must lean into it, the fear. The only way out is through the opening of the zipper. Its ridges will scrape as you escape. The blood is proof your heart is still beating. Your heart evidence you can still love. Love conquering fear, a reminder that bag was never meant for you, a reminder you're not dead yet and life blooms love, blooms hope. When the zipper open, the words will pour out. And there's so many after the silence, a longing that spills so much ink you run out of paper to catch it. Bones crack when escaping after so much stillness, popping into place and reminding you the joints still work. Burning from moving after so long, the words become smoke a joint of celebration and rotation. No more choking on your words from hot boxing that bag alone. Smoking out the fear means opening the bag. 
on the outside, it looks less like a tomb. It's been transformed to a death that doesn't require dying, a cocoon, caterpillars becoming goo before butterflies. To grow wings, you must first become shapeless, mold a mouth without a zipper to say you made it. Before all of this, you must learn to scream for help. You cannot open your own body bag. Unzip your lips, call for help. Thank you. Give it up for the poet, judges. Please send your scores in, judges. Okay. So remember, uh, we're here every week on Wednesday uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, every Wednesday, we have a workshop via Zoom right before the show. So you can always go to that if you feel like, I really want to go up on that stage, but I don't know how to write, or I don't have the motivation to write, or blah, 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 blah. Then do it. Do that workshop. You know, a lot of these amazing poets have written some of their best poems in that workshop. And that is just the truth. Also, make sure to uh, hashtag everything, hashtag Berkeley Slam when you're tweeting about it or resharing it and all that great stuff. Help us fundraise for the Bay Area Anti Repression Committee Fund. You can donate to any of the Rich Oak things that we talked about or at Berkeley Slam on Venmo. Remember, uh, our Patreon is patreon.com slash rich oak events. Okay. So on deck, we have the last poet of our first round before our amazing feature. Um, wait, on deck is our amazing feature. Mm, math. But coming up to the stage, give it up for our last poet of the first round. Maya. Hi. Um, I wanted to explain something real quick. Bactine is an anti antiseptic, like hydrogen peroxide. It's used for cuts and wounds. Um, and you guys can hear me okay, right? Okay, cool. This is called Things That Bactine Has Taught Me. One, the cut on my knee isn't the worst part. The liquid after is. Meaning you should always be watching for the second wave of pain. When it hurts, you know it's working. It's not a good type of working though. This means that you will die. And even if you don't, you'll wish you did. This means that the stinging on my right leg only reminds me of you. Meaning you drowned me, then made me spit up all the dirty water that you tried to baptize me in. Meaning baptisms are not always holy. Meaning I died at mine. Two. When they try to pour back teen on your scrapes, don't let them. That burning sensation will set you on fire until heat has eaten away at every happy memory. Until all I'm left with is the thought of drowning. Three. Bactine has taught me to change forever into another body and or band-aid. Bactine taught me to forever be crashed into and take it as a compliment and then apologize for being in the way. The first time my mother poured Bactine into my wound, she poured till Bactine and blood switched roles. She poured till my blood was stinging me and I apologized a dozen times before crying. Bactine taught me to apologize for shit that's not my fault. Bactine taught me to apologize for shit that happens to me before it has even happened. Four, you should never trust your mother. No, seriously, she will leave you for China while you sleep and you will always remember that night. And she will leave you to get a glass of wine while blood pours and skin stinks. Your mother will claim to know more about you than anyone else. And she will still not know the first thing about the ways in which you make art. See, art is a sacred thing, which cannot be shown to those who leave you for wine or China or work or the grocery store only to return empty handed. Five, hospital gowns are always a good thing because they are not papery shirts and pants. It means they're out of them. But it could also mean Bactine and saline is coming, which is not actually a good thing at all, six. You have to wait for the stinging to go away to see if anything's gotten better. 
meaning after the second hit, sometimes things turn out all right. I can't guarantee it. For me, it was 16 hospital stays, meaning I spent a, around a year total in a bed bolted to the floor, meaning I spent around a year scraping my name into wood, meaning the staff all knew me more than my mother did, does, meaning I spent more money on sweatpants that don't have strings than food, meaning I spent a year dripping in back team. Thank you. Give it up for the poet. Judges, please give us your scores, judges. Okay. So while we wait for the scores, I want to remind you of all our Patreon, patreon.com slash uh, Rich Oak Events, R-I-C-H-O-A-K-E-V-E-N-T-S, mm. spelling B champ. Um, because we take the top five poets of the first round to get to the second round, we're going to take all our poets to the second round. So we can wait on the scores until after our amazing feature. Um, before our feature comes up, I have a great and amazing bio for them. If y'all know who this is, great. If y'all don't, then ooh, are you in for a doozy of amazing poetry? I can be as biased as I want. I've seen this poet on multiple stages. They're amazing. Great. Ooh, great. Okay. So I would like to introduce Yao. Yao is a Ghanaian artist residing in Los Angeles. They are a writer, educator, and author of, poetry, of the poetry collection Unveiling the Trauma. He is an activist and advocate who connects to his audience through poetic storytelling on topics related to identity, family, and immigration. Yao is the 2011 National Collegiate Speech and Debate Runner-Up in Poetry Interpretation, the 2017 Individual World Poetry Slam finalist, a 2018 Individual World Poetry Slam finalist, a 2018 Exit 36 Poetry Festival champion and a 2018 National Poetry Slam runner-up. Yao is currently a professor and director of speech and debate at Concordia University, Irvine, but additionally finds joy in being a professional laugher and a rooted dancer with specialty in Afrobeats and West African tribal dance on stage. Yao becomes his stories channels every word through time and space to give the audience a cathartic experience. Mm, that just sounds great. Okay, so our scores for our last two, Chardonnay got a 25.9 and Mai got a 24.7. But before our second round, I would, would like to welcome you in to listen to this amazing feature. Please welcome Yao Krematen. All right, hello, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? Okay, I'm excited to be here. Uh, it was great so far, hearing all these lovely poems, dope folks. Uh, so my name is Yao, uh, everything he said is correct, except, I, I don't know, I think I, I sent like a like an old bio. I'm not the, I'm not the current uh, uh, speech and debate director at Concordia University. Uh, I quit that job because, you know, when you feel like quitting a job that's, you know, it's been a while, so I'm like, all right, I, I gotta do this traveling poet, poet thing. So uh, I did that, <laughs> I quit it, and then, and then COVID happened. So I've been home since. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna do a few poems for y'all, if that's okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. This, the, this first poem, I, I wrote it, uh, as part of a Facebook, chat, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter challenge called Who Am I Challenge. I'm not sure if any of y'all saw it, uh, but this is, this, is, this is what I wrote. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, if you have, you know, notes, notes, no, notebook, anything, right? You know, write down any lines that stand out to you. There might be a friend that needs a line or two to, you know, to be hot warmed. And so, or like for you in the, in the future, right? It's always good when like poets are poeting uh, to write down lines that stand out to you um, for yourself too, okay? Uh, okay, 
who am I? It's not just a question of who I be or what I believe, but a quest into how I breathe. So hear me when I say, although you took my breath away, I did not fall for you. <laughs> did not death do us part for you or anything that tried to break me. I am breakable, but I know how to put myself back together. Call me creator, configurator. I transcend earth, birthed an alternate universe where destiny fulfills, raised a fortified utopia and planted it in my respiratory system so my lungs never forget to inhale now and exhale tomorrow knowing everything will be okay. I am okay most days. I am the sky. I star in my own movies. Never the secondary character. I am not what you think I could be. Not what your pastor says I should be. I am an imperfect relationship with a God that takes me as I am, not yours to eat. So cross me off your grocery list. <laughs> Cut me out the categories you've placed me in and replace me with a mirror. You love to tear apart another man's flesh. So here you go. Cast the first stone and crack at your own command. Outrageous how easily we become our own destruction, a viral distraction. But let me not, let me brag. I go way back like jambe drums and tribal dance. I am footwork of the ancestor whose groove choreographed in pain yet feels all gain as he moves his limbs to the tune of war cries and ain't that a whole mood tell me i'm a whole mood you a whole mood cool 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 call me classy or classic i am classical elements tattooed in my body just saying i am the fire i spit when I talk, I air goodness and good vibes and hope you watch me water slide into your DMs and unearth joy out of your cheekbones. Shit, I am cheekbones. I chew to chisel this jawline. So don't ask me if I want more food. Nah, I'm just into chicken bones. <laughs> Lord, have mercy on these souls. I am so so soft you would think I was gone with the wind. I am the wind the weather before the forecast spells on storms that try to destroy me. I am the ghost that hunts me in nightmares. I conjure to convince myself, maybe I am the devil or danger or dying. They say, you are not strong. I say, you are right. I am not strong. I am strength waiting to be lifted like Jesus. I break bread with the broken and watch myself resurrect out of myself. Once a stranger told me, you're everything, says I see you everywhere, says ain't that just like a God, says teach me. But you can't teach nobody to be God-like and that's the thing, you just gotta be, you know? You just got to be. Therefore, I am. So that's the first poem. Hope y'all enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, anybody seen Black is King yet? Anybody? Anybody seen? Hey. Yes? yes? OK, OK. Um, that's my shit. So uh, that, that's my shit. Beyonce is the shit. Anybody that thinks otherwise needs to rethink their lives and their choices. Um, so I am watching Black is King and a black woman appears in all her glory, warns all other planets to listen to the sound erupting from the depths of earth. A black woman sings and the sun smiles and your sons smile and the stars soprano at the sound of her voice i am watching black is king and it is crystal clear that beyonce is doing the lord's work which means all you beyonce haters work full time for the devil an ode to beyonce coming to you live from queen bee's hive because we tired we are tired we are tired of your bullshit talking unsolicited opinions say she this swear she that now they say she's not black all right 
All right, haters, now let's get information right from the start. I know you know of her ancestry. Her family tree stems from the roots, seed of the first woman, descendant of the black women, prophesied a world where a black girl is worshiped for her gift and grace. Behold, the reign of Beyonce, praise be her majesty, daughter of divine prophecy, damn right. I'm talking about destiny, child. Put some respect on her lineage. Yeah, don't pick up her book if you're just going to skim pages, misinterpret paragraphs. How are you trying to read Beyonce and don't even know how to read between the lines on her thighs lay offspring of her womb, children of God? What are the odds they're raised in songs and psalms while she simultaneously juggles hard work and passion for the world to feed? Bay, be bold, boss, black, jack, nah, queen of all all trades. She's the best thing you never had. Yeah, you hungry, vicious vultures. The hour of devour is here, you beast. Go ahead, pray on her head, but you best pray for forgiveness because like Jesus, she will come back like a thief in the night. Brand new album in sight, drunk in love and full of light. You try to hurl her halo. Remember? the walls she built, how she tumbled them down without a sound for you to be crazy in love with her vast cosmic crown. She don't panic at your poking. She'd be titanic, tucked in titanium. Still, no amount of iceberg can break or sink her ship. She'd be kinship, can chip her skin, burn or bound her and sin. She'd be brown skin girl smooth move like she speed of light can't nobody run this mother like she do you better be god too to keep up with her groove what does a black woman have to do to earn her heir to a throne she built with her bare hands who doesn't love to eat out the god in the black woman she is after all giver of life Holy mother of earth's firstborn, you die and you rise. Black woman, you die and you rise and you die and you die and you die and nobody feeds on your dying better than us. Black men, we have failed you. Forgot we came from you. Forgot how to care for you. Forgot how to carefully unfold into wool skin for your slumber. We gotta do better. We gotta heal better. We gotta be better for the black woman. So that's the poem for all the, the, the beehive and all the Beyonce haters can keep sitting. Uh, I got two more poems. It'll be, it'll be real quick. Um, hmm, what should I do first? Okay. In 1814, Sarah Bachman was abducted to France as fetish. Long after her exit from Earth, she existed as an exhibit dissected for public display. Today, I woke up to French doctors broadcasting a net on my mother's land, proposed testing COVID-19 vaccine on the African a force of black magic rises to call out the caucasity. Now, forced apology belts from their throats like vomit, says. It was just a clumsy expression, except experimental oppression has always began with a clumsy confession. I am first to be sacrificed. Thanks, greedy white ghost. Subject the African anatomy to a test we did not consent to. Meanwhile, in China, African expatriates lie breathless, evicted from homes, hotels, hostels, because antivirus is grounds for anti black bodies have always been the answer to a solution that benefits everyone but us. So, no, you are not allowed to touch my mother's progeny. Africa is home to deadly diseases that dig dirt into our duodenum. Do you know how long we've been dying of malaria, of measles, 
of venom, vicious than the virus corona controls headlines this time because it's poison stinks more than just black people. Yeah, corona colorblind, corona crucifies all hail death that has nothing to do with the color of my skin. But why does it always have to be about race? Well, maybe it is because it has always been biblical for unto us a child is born unto us a daughter is given and the government shall be upon her shoulders so leaders of my mother's land beware they will come bearing gifts do not accept donations our present day name for slave trade just another way of selling out sarah bartman's remains her brain skeleton Sexual organs remained on display, even in death. You prey on our bodies for profit. Money you refuse to use as reparations to rebuild what you stole from the Herrera women of Namibia, whose bones were broken into by German doctors. The African family tree is an obsession. You climb and cling to clone its back and use its bark to break its black off goes the greedy white ghost with his degree. Medical colonization did not stay in Africa. It too crossed the Atlantic in slave ships. It too carved scars in Annika and Lucy and Betsy. Shameful how the black woman is always the first to be pried open. A portal we crawled through but forgot to pray to. Today, I woke up to French doctors broadcasting a net on my mother's land. Oh, they totally ignored Italy, forgot France, didn't even consider China epicenter of the virus. Their minds sailed straight to Africa. And isn't that just like the greedy to suggest a friendly visit and leave with our belongings? Isn't that just like the greedy white ghost to exploit black life in the name of progress? Isn't that just like the ghost to rinse and repeat racism regardless of repercussions? Isn't that just typical? So that's that poem. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, it, it happened when, I mean, they, they, they're still testing folks in Africa, so. You know, we just gonna we just gonna have to keep keep fighting these colonizers, cause colonizers are still colonizers, um, dressed in whatever <laughs> you what you want to call it. I ain't got no metaphor for them. They're just colonizers. <laughs> um, uh, my yao poem. You wanna hear my yao poem? I have another poem in years. My yao poem. Oh my goodness. I can try. I can try. I can try to do this Yapong. Okay. Lord, don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. To put a, to put respect on my name. You know what? I'm gonna try. I'm, I'm gonna try and do it. I'm gonna try and, and, and go through it. So uh what was it? It was it was it was in Iowa, and I, I introduced myself to this white guy, right? And I told him my name is Yao. And he said, Oh, what a cool name. How do you spell that? And I said, Y A W. To which he responded, oh, you mean y'all? Mm -mm, I meant y'all, like, what the fuck? When you introduce yourself to me as Aaron, did I look at you with dismay and ask, do you mean a Aaron? What made you think that you could question the pronunciation of my name? Do you feel that much entitled? And who told you it was okay to feel this way? to act this way? Did you learn this oppressive behavior? Was it ingrained in you, passed down to you by your white ancestors? Did they, so, see, I don't, I don't re remember it. That's it, that, that, that's all you get. So they can still put their respect on the name. Okay, that, that's all you get. You get the introduction of that poem. Hey. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, okay, I'm gonna do one last poem and then it's gonna be over, okay? Um, thank y'all for being here uh, and sharing space with me. Uh, I'm happy that this evening I'm able to share space with, with you all. Uh, can't wait to uh, hear, see the next uh, part of the slam.
So, okay. The first slave ship to arrive in Africa was called Jesus. <laughs> My question is, did Jesus come to save or enslave? Your Honor, the Bible is the oldest book on earth. It's text, a collection of works from God spoken through scribes, priests, poets, descendants of enslaved Israelites transplanted across oceans like scripture translated into over 600 languages transcribed not only by God's chosen, but by traitors, murderers, colonizers, who took the Bible out of context the way they took black folk out their continent, spray painted, tainted scripture on our suffering, said, servant, obey your master. So we bowed our heads, not in protest, but in prayer. Heard God say, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Then why is it blinding to be black and believer? Why ghost write a white God to hunt black gods? Behold, I am coming like a thief in the night. Who knew the second coming would be a trip to Africa to ship families to the promised land of the free? Free if you fit in, free if you don't fight back, free if you forget you were taken. If my body is holy book, your honor, then it is no coincidence the Bible is the most stolen, the most sold, when will truth spill out your mouth the way blood spills out your hands? America, you are on trial. Here, take this Bible, my body, whichever one jogs your memory, swear to tell the truth and only the truth. Do you preach about Jesus? Mm -hmm. Nailed to the concrete, calling on his mother, so-called Christians upholding the name of the Lord while choke holding his people, call it revelations, never revolution. You boast about having read the whole Bible, but you didn't read the whole Bible if you skipped the middle passage. Take a good look at this book titled Parts of the Holy Bible, selected for the use of the Negro slaves. Does it ring any bells? Objection. 90% of the Old Testament and half of the New were heavily edited forcing enslaved Africans to read scripture told of Joseph's captivity, but left the part where Moses led the Israelites to freedom. Objection, answer the question. Does God know of how you Bible studied black skin sinking in the Atlantic like a protest song? Not Jesus enough to walk on water, but savior enough to build a nation in shackles while you rewrote these chapters, crossed out racist, rapist, body whipping, bone breaking, Bible thumping liar. Did you or did you not take the Bible out of context by taking black folk out its very text? And 400 years later, still black, still Bible only existed when black ink met white empty pages. Still, leader of the free world poses in a photo op with the Bible while black folk are blinded by the flash or the tear gas. Nothing further. Okay, that's it. Thank you all so much. I appreciate Woo! you all. So, thank you. Give it up for our feature. Go for y'all. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. So we are going to be taking a five-minute break. Um, in the meantime, go to the bathroom, get another drink, go outside, smell the fresh air, smoke maybe, but you know, Keep a mask on. I don't know. This is a weird world we live in. See you in five minutes. Okay, five minutes. Doo -doo 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 -doo.
Okay, how's everyone doing? Is everyone here? I have to learn how to like swallow beverages, but not also a ton of air because I keep burping all the time. Relatable issues. Okay, so our second round, do we have Mai here? Is yes. You, oh, perfect. Do we have Chardonnay here? Me? Do we have Dog Days Are Over here? Yup. Uh, do we have Reggie here? Me? And then do we have Tino here? Yes, you do. Ooh, everyone's here. Okay, do we have our all our judges? Um, scorekeeper, do we know who have all, all our judges here? Let me start the second round. One. One, two, three, four, five. I think we have all our judges if you're here. Uh, type something into the chat. We got one. Two, three, four. Ooh. Okay, do we have let me see. Uh I think. Ooh, we have everybody. Okay. Are we ready? Um Arvind, are we ready? Are we already live? I can't even tell. We never went offline. And that's how much I know about technology. Okay. Are we ready for the second round? Yes. Everyone's good. Okay. Ugh, this is a big shirt. Okay. Hello, everybody. I would like to welcome you back to round two of the slam. Pa, 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 pa. I hope all of you are feeling rested, got dessert, got some more drinks, are really refreshing yourselves from that amazing feature in the first round we had. Our second round is gonna be our poets from the first round in reverse order. So we're gonna have Mai, then Chardonnay, then Dog Days Are Over, then Reggie, then Tino. Then we're gonna figure out who wins, wow. Okay, so on deck we have my but coming up to the stage we have our sacrificial poet that's right we have another sacrifice for the second round to help um the oh okay someone requested the last three scores of the poets from the first round i'm just gonna go over them okay so dog days are over got a 27.5 um let me pull up chardonnay got a 25.9 and my got 24.7 in case people missed it because I said it in the middle of the uh, feature spiel. Okay, so on deck we have my, but coming up to the stage, we have our sacrifice for the second round. Judges, you know how it goes. Uh, anything better than this poem, you do higher. Anything worse, you do lower. Okay, great, amazing. Okay, please welcome to the stage. On deck, we have Mai coming up to the stage. Give it up for Javi. Uh, uh, <laughs> love a top. We love a top. Okay. I just couldn't stop myself. Just means you could, but you decided not to. I recounted all the time someone couldn't stop themselves and have a list of boys' names written with my spit. I don't believe in ghosts, but I do believe in the leaving behind. The empty space of longing and revenge both feel like a cold spot. There's parts of us that sour with touch and it always means fermentation, the science of unraveling, to break and coil and curdle into some metallic aftertaste. Don't get me wrong. I think memories can be sweet things the gentle cusp of an underbelly or the sweat trickle that barely teeters into steam, but take that same memory and press it of its juice, stop its seeds between your toes on good oak and bottle it, I forget. Do we turn what we choose not to remember into wine or does it not rot as gracefully? What are we if not always trying to hold on? I used to believe that if I wasn't thinking of my grandmother, then she stopped existing. 
some void behind me, always following the moment my eyes pulled other focus. At night, I would pray for everyone I knew, even the ones I did not love, in case they stopped being there in the morning. But I learned some people stopped being there in the morning anyway. If I could change one thing about me, it'd be my ability to remember pain in increasing amounts. The first time I lost a tooth, I swallowed it. The second time we tied floss and closed the bathroom door, and fuck, it was on the wrong tooth, but that one went anyway. Now every tooth after hurts even more, like something you ripped out too soon. I've been pulling teeth since, and my gums won't stop bleeding. I'm in a gay club for the cheap drinks and the cardio. I sweat and rehydrate until the sweat is 90 proof. I have the uncanny, be uncanny ability to vomit when I need to, even when the walls are slow moving, horses in a carousel, I plug my nose and heave the way a life raft batters the waves. Some nights I flush nothing down but teeth. I'm 12 and carry weight like an inner tube on my waistline. My grandmother tells me if I keep eating bacon at this rate, I may wake up one of the pigs. I must have stopped praying right then. I don't think I learned to hate myself. I just learned to expect more of myself than I had to offer. So I took, I grew smaller. I was always dizzy and always growling. My teeth were yellow back, but I could still fill myself with what I wanted and summon it back up again. I knew magic, I did. Could disappearing act a childhood and make it look good in jeans. Do you know how dangerous desire can be? I wanted and could be wanted and all the steps in between, I could keep down long enough. Uh, give it up for our sacrifice. Ba, 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 ba. Uh, judges, please get your scores in. Okay. Organized crime related activity. Just to go through the round two, we have it in this order. My Chardonnay, dog days are over. Reggie and Tino on deck. We have Chardonnay, but coming up to the stage, give it up for our first poet of the second round. My Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Okay, cool. This is called The Sound of Silence in Five Parts. One. Silence sounds like a dog whistle that only I can hear, like not even the dogs can hear it, but I can and it's so annoying. Silent sounds like a soft breeze on a hot day, like a day that's way too hot for anything. Silence sounds like my childhood best friend's mother next to me in the ER detoxing. The doctors called it unusual, tragic even. I heard ignorance is bliss. Two, silence rings, church bells that only crash to cry. Cracking bronze, silence sits and kneels before compassion. Silence sings a chorus that only hums a melody, no harmony, all fallacy. Silence is my home's church. No real prayer, false praise of moments made for eulogies. Three, silence sounds like the empty space after a diagnosis is given. Sounds like a flat line that shouldn't be there. Sounds like funerals in between trees. Chorus voices bleed blue at the altar. A humble tone so cold. A voice so low it freezes over, waiting to crack. My skin lays death down. A burial of bodies into bruises. A memorial, a memorial of the emotions I tried to save and or savor for. Silence is the six-year-old girl next to me in the ER screaming all night. She came from a home I once knew so well. Silence is muffled screams and not being able to shut out light. Silence sounds like when you get in a car going home after weeks of forgetting what home feels like. Feels like the empty space between your feet and the pavement. Empty voices shatter in that very space. My brain becomes jagged. My brain, the thorn on roses, always looking for a way into myself, toothy. My body, a well, always drowning itself while trying to become full and or whole. 
my body drowning in its own purpose and or perception. Mouth becomes procedural, only knows to follow orders. This operating table waits for surgeon, a tongue so sterile it eats away at teeth. Five. Silence is the contraction of teeth into jaw, is the only contraption tongue could ever fold itself into, the only tool lips could spit out. Silence is and always will be the loudest art of taking, is the only way tongues spill hope out from brain and call it giving. Silence. Thank you. Give it up for my judges. Please send your scores in, judges. Okay, also for the first sacrificial poet, uh, they got a 26.2. Give it up for the poet, not the poet. Okay, on deck we have Dog Days Are Over coming up to the stage. Give it up for Chardonnay. Can you guys hear me? Yes. A sustainer on not playing piano. You have the fingers of a pianist so long and slender, says several old professors, all male, all white, all in mentor worlds and deciding how I should use my fingers for them, labeled as one who's already trained to bend the right ways, as if that's what it means to be black all the way to my bones I've been taught to perform. And, who, and for who am I expected to perform? These men all tall and reminiscent of the slender. In my memory, each is dressed in a suit, black as the key shrunk in between those large and white, differentiated by the lips curved in an upward bend. Its placement is unnatural as the shape wished upon my fingers. Some of these men older, made other innuendos of my fingers, thirsty for the juice that flows when they perform, my body learning new ways to bend underneath their vision, all imaginary as that slender, but just as haunting of a face, unmasked but white, and growing hungry to consume my black, or reminding me that my presence triggered memories of an ex, black, as if that excuses the racism from his fingers, touching without asking, explaining forgiveness is owed to his white. It must be delivered, even if that means I must perform. And if I embody too much space to make myself more slender, to take the extra parts of me and force them to bend, I leave these conversations with pieces of myself exposed, past bend, molded into a box itself the darkest shadow, black, a piece of myself once removed to make slender, words ripping from my throat by metal fingers, relived death with a stage to perform. There is no survival if you bleach yourself white. When you see the piano keys, first you notice the white, then you hear the song, but you don't see what it takes to bend, to give yourself a shape ready to perform. When your pieces are no longer shadows, they're still black, still learning not to hide, to move like nibble fingers. Where's the balance between doing shows and avoiding slender? The haunting desire to perform with my fingers, a white man watching his wallet grow slender as he bends to be near this black. Thank you. Give it up for Chardonnay. Judges, please <laughs> give your scores in. Uh, OK. On deck, we have Reggie coming up to the stage. We have Dog Days Are Over. But we have the score for my, where I got a 24.8. Give it up for the poet, not the points. Uh, OK, on deck. We have Reggie coming up to the stage. Give it up for Dog Days Are Over. Yeah. 
When I say fuck this world, I mean unfuck the goat from the wolf's clothing it holds in its hinged jaw, still bloodied with star-spangled banners. Fuck this world like the American flag has unearthed ways to measure death in pounds and build monolithic mausoleums out of neglected bones. Fuck this world like America always holding number one in its hinged jaw and losing count of bodies like an hourglass loses count of the sand grains passing through its throat. Fuck this world like unfuck the butterfly from grated teeth borderlands splitting its family tree's limbs with each time Moses refused to resurrect himself to Red Sea split open Trump's borders fuck this world fuck this world like fuck this kink for voyeurism of bodies detached from everything not their body in this poem not their body consists of every meal they've never eaten due to poverty or the white house or aren't these two words just synonyms for a rotting mausoleum one time i stepped outside my body and was run over by a white construction truck its license plate read usa hyphen 777 when my right arm detached i saw fragmented stars and stripes when my left arm dissolved i heard distant gunshots and protests that was a meal i never ate upon limping back to my body my arm still laying alive on my shoulders but forgetting what it was to be american i only drank the musty wine and stale bread stored away in the tabernacle of my chest fuck this world like fuck your applause only because no amount of palms coming together will resurrect every prayer that dies under the tongue of a prayer president and isn't president just a synonym for preacher fuck this world like fuck the tainted alchemy of the preacher's consecration of anything he deems holy enough how he will never alchemize all his wine back into water for impoverished thirsty mouths if god made us in its image then it is not free from an imperfect preacher's mouth there are no graves dug deep enough by the white house for god to bury his shame into fuck this world like this world world doesn't give a fuck if you're actually God. All you have to do is take the pounds you weigh from death's gravity and convert the tons into dollar bills. The president and pyramid upon each bill staring back. Both of them a voyeurism for mass graves. Mass graves. Both of them surveilling. Both of them smiling. Thank you. Give it up for dog days are over. Uh, judges, Ooh. please give us your scores. Uh, okay. Our second poet, Chardonnay, got a 26.6. Give it up for the poet, not the points. Uh, okay. On deck, we have our last poet of the night, Tino. But coming up to the stage, give it up for our penultimate poet. That means second to last. Reggie. The black body knows how the back will break and still try to bend for white America, how to snap itself into a crackling hymn to unravel into blood nectar devotional. In short, the black body knows how to decay beautifully for a white audience how to die pretty in its best clothes and the trace of its last smile still gliding across its lips. The black body is a quiet prayer, is a whisper of the wind to a vengeful God, a silent plea to the loudest bullet. The bullet knows the blood. The blood knows the splash of itself against concrete. The concrete knows the soft caress of a black body against the sidewalk. The sidewalk knows that this country will wash away the evidence of murder by the morning knows that the blood will nourish the weeds growing from the cracks in its skin. The weeds will bloom the biggest flowers. Every dandelion, a quiet memorial for the black boys forgotten on the asphalt. Yellow suns rising as a mother's sun is set into a grave. The black body has always been dirt before it is flesh, is dust before it is bone, becomes a burial before the funeral, before the dying before it even has the chance to live. And I wonder how many corpses I know by name, how many cemeteries hold my childhood friends. We know death so well, we choose to call it by a different name, a passing, a home going. 
A bloody sunset painting the sky into a scarlet wound. Niggas know death like we know our cousins. I imagine it chasing the street lights at dusk as we run home to the safety of our mother's arms and the ass whooping she would bring if any of her babies dared tempt the monsters hiding behind the shadows and how she warns us of all the black kids that didn't make it inside before the night did. How death will try to break down the front door if we don't let it in. She tells us never to let it in, to never answer the door like she never answers the house phone for fear of the bad news it will bring, for fear that the next time she'll see her baby in a Sunday best will be in the casket and it is sickening how much of our breath this country is willing to steal from us, how they will sing so beautifully at the funeral but forget our names by the time the last tear falls onto the flowers left on our graves, a black boy dies and a metal of petaled rot grows in his place. White people will stop and admire the roses but forget the blood that stains them red. You know, I could die tonight and they'd pull a bouquet from my twisted spine by the morning. They'd say, damn, what a shame that they are gone. But did you see the way the flowers bloomed when planted over their bones? <laughs> give it up for Reggie. Uh, judges, please give in your scores. Okay, on deck we have the end of the show. We have figuring out who's gonna win and who is still an amazing poet regardless. Coming off the stage, we have Tino, but uh, dog days are over. Their score was 26.6 that last round. Give it up for the poet, not the points. Okay, coming off the stage, give it up for our last poet of the night, Tino. One of these days I'll have to address my ideation because not every birthday can be happy. Some days they're stomaching the fractured marriage undrown the God in the reflection. Other years, there are no candles to blow out. Everywhere there is a prayer. All of my loved ones calling me home. What else but a pocket full of yesterdays or petals where ashes collect are the perspective ends of the same cycle. Sometimes something always turns to clog the drain. Once it was upchuck and we said never again. Other times it was trauma bonding and it cried internally until a Pixar movie cradled the sharpest parts of me. Most days are godless when an echo doesn't hear itself return. Maybe not today. Maybe ideation doesn't belong with the birthday cake and the blunt and the ass clapping, but yes to more prayer, yes to growth and wilting away. And, and if there is a God, it is just the love I'm waiting to receive in return. I, I pocket white lighters and envision everything ending too quickly. Just to have so many hands, so many prayers grant me a new tomorrow. How too often I'm taking, I've taken them for granted. How at 22 I was told I was too young to be depressed. How all I've known is oppression and have the candles to prove them. Every year someone said, I'm glad you were born. Is another reason worth loving me back. I have no more room for trauma bonding. I've been so unwilling to call healing a love language. Everything talks and threatens to move into me. Is Every day has to be a cleansing of keeping myself alive just to spite the oppressors. Today, I am not a dead thing, no matter how much they want me to be. Tomorrow, I will still be 27. Tomorrow, there will be more ass shaking, more blunts, and more love. Give it up for Tino. Judges, give us your scores, please. Judges, give us your scores. Reggie's score last round was, last previous to this, was 27.8. Give it up for the poet, not the point. OK, so while we wait for the final scores, and we also wait for who gets first, second, and third, I have some other amazing slams and shows in the Bay Area to shout out. Every Monday on Instagram Live at Legendary Collective, you can see the Santa Cruz Word Church. You can also sign up. Amazing. Uh, and you can do it from your home. I don't even have to do the spiel of like, if you have time to drive out to Santa Cruz, you can do this at home. It's just on Monday. 
We also have the Rich Oak Alchemy Slam every first and third Saturdays at the Allen Bluefer Center. Their Instagram live is at Rich Oak Alchemy. And you can also go to the Oakland Slam every third Tuesday at Lucas Tap Room. There will be a show on the 19th that is next week. Uh, and workshops on the 5th and 19th, 5th already passed, but 19th too. Oh, wow, two and one, you can also do that. You can learn more at their Instagram at Oakland Slam. Okay, oh my gosh, whoa. Is it this Saturday, a third Saturday? Oh, what? L look at all, look at all this art, look at all this stuff. Remember, first and third Saturdays, Rich Oak Alchemy Slam at Rich Oak Alchemy. Okay. And then, so Tino got a 26.7 in that second round. Give it up for the poet, not the points. Uh, so while we wait for first, second, and third, since the slam is over, I can wish one of our poets a happy birthday, as you may have heard. It is Tino's birthday. So, you know, I can be as uh, unbiased as I want now. Ooh, happy birthday, <laughs> Tino. Whoa! Thank you. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Uh, this is the best birthday present I could have. It's just being here. And uh, yeah, all of y'all uh, and the poetry. Yao, you were amazing. Uh, thank you so much for everything, uh, for being here. Uh, everyone who's excited, everyone who, uh, if y'all like Yao set, they're, uh, they're actually they're coming back next week for Oakland Slam. Uh, they're gonna be our feature. So uh, make sure to tune in next, next Tuesday uh, at the Oakland Slam page for some more excellent stuff. Wow, Thank you. Amazing. Guys. Give it up for Tino. Leo oh, Caesar. Okay, okay so right now we right. have our scores in third place. Give me a drum roll. Da, 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 da. Give it up for. We're just going to go back to that screen again. Tino. Yeah. Yes, friend. Ah, thank you. <laughs> Don't Anything take that money. more to say? Uh, thank you for uh, supporting my video game habit. Mark. Okay. Uh, in second place with a 54.1. Oh, sorry, Tino got a 53.3. In second place with a 54.1, give it up for Dog Days Are Over. Woo! Hector the Inspector. Oh, thanks so much. I can't believe it. Thank you. Oh, boy. Short and sweet. Love it, amazing, poignant. Already said everything that there needs to be said in the poetry, great. Okay, so in first place with a score of a 56.4, give it up for, we're gonna go back to that screen again, you guessed it, Reggie. Oh, a copious amount of organized crime related activity. Where's my face? Hi. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Um, yeah, um, I'm gonna buy a lot of, um, or a little bit, cause you know, the Rona made everything expensive. So I'll buy a little bit of marijuana with that. Um, and then, you know, yeah. Thank you for <laughs> getting me high. Ooh, give it up for Reggie, for Dog Days Are Over, for Tino, for Mai, for Chardonnay, for everyone who came up to the stage. Give it up for our amazing feature, Yao. Give it up for our Patreons, our patrons. Give it up for yourself for being here, for still existing in this world and traversing it. Give it up for, uh, I don't know, plants, for cats. Give it up for yourself. Call your mom. Tell her that you love her. Unless you don't, then you don't have to, you know? I don't know. Drink water. Drink plenty of water. That is our show. Um, we'll see you next week with an amazing workshop at 7 again um, okay bye <laughs>